Okay, at this time, welcome everyone. Um, we are going to uh, rise and pledge to the flag and a moment of silence. Please remember everyone who's in the front lines working hard through all this. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. At this time, we'll have a roll call. Terry. Are you ready? Oh, I get there. Hold on. Oh, I know what I did. Okay. This is the first time we're using board docs to document everything. So give Terry a minute to make sure she's at the right spot. Thanks for your patience. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. You can touch you. I can't hear anybody. He's not there. Okay. Dr. Marks. Here. Mr. Gordon. Here. Mrs. Dr. Gursky. Here. Mr. Reichert. Here. Mrs. Fish. Here. Mr. Huron. Here. Mr. Kirsch. No. Mrs. Edmeets. Here. Here. Okay. Okay, it's time for you, Mrs. Edmeets. Okay, the first thing we have is uh, a motion. We need a motion to um, take action to temporarily waive the requirements and guidelines of DASD policy 006.1 related to board member electronic participation at school board meetings from April 20th, or April 2020 through May 2020 meetings. Do I hear a motion? I make that motion. Is that Christina? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, second. Second, second Chris here on. Dr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Dr. Gursky. Yes. Mr. Reichert. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. He must have his mic off or something. Can he do thumbs up, thumbs down, maybe? He's unmuted. Okay. Mrs. Edmeets. Yes. Okay, Terry. Um, yes. Okay. Um, at this time, we have the to approve the minutes from March 11th meeting. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion. Second. Who seconded it? Chris Huron? Vic. Vic. Vic, okay, sorry. Second. Vic seconded it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. If Kasten does not have audio, he can use the chat feature. Pardon me? 
I was just telling Kasten if he does not have audio, he can use the chat feature to register his votes. <clears throat> okay. Um, next, we have board reports. Do we have a report from Columbia Montour Votech? Yeah, this is Chris. A um, couple things. We are um, conducting those board sessions um, equally virtual Zoom meetings. Um, we had our second one last night. Two, two particulars to share is um, the final disposition of the Benton situation and their withdrawal from the JOC is taking place and it's now gotten to um, the legalities and how that's getting packaged, but they are, um, they are separating an exercise um, that um, provision in their, um, their agreement. And then the second um, uh, pending issue there is the um, search and formality of the interview process begins tomorrow with virtual interview sessions for replacement of the director at VOCEC. So that'll be ongoing for the next couple months probably, depending on how things go. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, CSIU. We probably don't have anything because Johannes is not here. And how about a PSBA update? Ricky? I have that. Um, PSBA is keeping us up to date. They have a coronavirus webpage that gives you all your information. They're very good about sending things out. They have canceled the May 11th Advocacy Day. Uh, they may try to do something virtual, but they haven't decided on that as of yet. But we get daily information trying to help us keep walking through this wonderful path. Okay, at this time we have superintendent's report. All right. Um, as far as our enrollment, we now, with all buildings, and these are the building enrollments, are 2,403 students in the buildings. It's interesting, we are um, at DPS, we're at now 687 students from K to three. Um, we have 124 pre-K students in that building with Head Start. High school is at 655. There are 159 students who will be graduating. And at Liberty Valley, 536 students. At middle school, there's 525. And the number of students we have attending uh, VOTEC at this time is 132 students. Some of the other things that have been happening is uh, within that PSBA legislative information, the bill that was being passed or being proposed in the uh, Congress, Pennsylvania Congress, to freeze taxes was withdrawn. The superintendents did a um, strong advocacy uh, to contact our legislators. I contacted the ones that we have to let them know what our expenses are in this, that we aren't saving that much money. Um, actually, we're probably not saving any money at all till we get down to the bottom of this. Uh, so they have withdrawn that bill and it worked out well for the districts. For graduation, we're in the, the process of making decisions there. The, uh, the building principal, Mr. Wynn and Mrs. Willoughby, as well as the senior class advisor are working with the senior advise or senior officers. And they also are, uh, have sent emails to all the seniors to ask them for their information. At this time, there are three proposals. A lot of it depends on when we are no longer under a stay at home order. So we have various options. Uh, I would recommend that there, if there are any senior students who are interested in providing some feedback, they email Mr. Wynn, Mr. Willoughby, or Mrs. Willoughby, or Mrs. Morgan, the school, the senior advisor. But we have three good options on the table. For prom, we are hoping for that uh, lift of social distancing, and we're hoping to late July, early August, potentially have an actual prom for the students if we can work that out. So that's the plans today, but we wait and see what happens tomorrow. 
And FFA, um, Future Farmers of America, on March 10th had a farmer's care event uh, for the Ronald McDonald House, and they raised $2,204.10 in donations. That's pretty remarkable because the total number of, of donations that were done across the area was only $7,000. So we, we did the lion's share of that. Also, I want to congratulate Kevin Palm for being ranked as the top high school piccolo player in Pennsylvania. I think this is his second year in the row in the row for having that uh, accolade. And at the high school, we also have Lydia Bache, who is awarded the College Opportunity, our College Board Opportunity Scholarship, uh, practicing using official SAT practice on Khan Academy in the amount of a thousand dollars. And the high school has earned their Middle State accreditation. Uh, in the report, they complimented the school leadership. They said the teachers are the best thing we have going in the entire building. And they complimented the custodians because the building was clean, neat, um, and safe. So they think that we have provided an outstanding educational environment. A little update regarding food service. Um, we started doing the bag lunches on Monday, March 16th, which is immediately after the school closures were called. And we have had increasing numbers uh, from 954 meals to um, well over 900 meals again as it goes through the weeks. We have changed our options from being out there five days a week to distribute. We are now out there Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays behind the middle school to distribute the bags, but we are providing meals for seven days a week. And many hands helping others are assisting with the weekend uh, snacks and foods that they've provided previously. I do want to compliment Wises uh, because they delivered 144 loaves of bread uh, for us to give out in weeks two and three. And Giant has also provided us with brown paper bags packaging uh, so that we can keep things as environmentally safe as possible. So that was very nice. And I don't know if you saw, but in the daily item early on, they did an article about all this. And just so parents are aware, um, we have grown in our process of providing the educational plan. And as we continue to grow and develop and evolve, um, teachers are doing more live sessions. And we hope by the week of May 11th, the teachers will be providing uh, some sort of a live session every day for their students. They use Google Classrooms for the majority of things. Some of the high school teachers have worked with GoToMeeting. Uh, some of them have done Zooms, emails, phone calls. Recently did a survey. It is still out there waiting for responses. So please look in your email family so that you can look at that and give your feedback. We just want to find out what the reaction is at this point. Before I left the office, it was 167 responses, uh, majority positive. Some that have multi-students are um, working through the, the glitches, but you know a lot of people are working at home too. So there's only so many computers in some of the homes. Uh, students in middle school and high school all have their Chromebooks with them. And we have given Chromebooks to um, kids at Liberty Valley that have requested it and had the need. And the next step is to provide primary school children where parents feel they have a need to make sure they get their Chromebooks. So we're moving along. I do want one more reminder for everyone that the email for Danville Area School District, the ending is changed. It's the first initial last name for the majority of people, but the ending is now Danville sd.org so it'd be arboil at danvillesd.org and we're moving to that quickly so if you can update that it is updated for all the email addresses on the web page that's what i've got for you jeff do we have any public comments If you have uh, a public comment, now is the time. Raise your hand and I'll allow you to speak. All 
All right, we have uh, Gregory Tipman going to give a public comment. I will activate him now. Um, Greg, please remember to unmute yourself when I allow you to talk, and then you can start your three minutes. Greg, say your name, your address, and we'll remind you that the comments are limited to three minutes. Gregory Tipman, 910 Bloom Street, Danville, PA. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I just had a few quick questions that I'm going to present to the board and administration related to the district's finances uh, in light of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and then provide a couple brief comments. Uh, first question, is there a preliminary estimate for a potential budget shortfall the district could face for next school year as a result of the economic impacts of the novel coronavirus? Uh, if so, what stop gaps are being implemented in the status quo to attempt to deal with those shortfalls? Uh, I think Ricky may have mentioned this in her superintendent's report, but for instance, uh, what sort of savings can the district expect on physical plant costs, such as electricity, HVAC, water, and sewage, uh, with the district's four buildings being closed for the remainder of the school year? And then finally, what other sorts of discretionary spending can be cut now? Uh, those are my questions. Just a couple uh, comments for what they're worth. Uh, the shutdown, uh, just not just of the schools, but the economy as well, has been difficult on every single member of the community and will continue to be so for the foreseeable future. I'm not envious of you, the school board of directors or our district administrators that have had to and will continue to have to make some difficult decisions. With that being said, I think it is imperative to be as forward-looking and proactive as possible to mitigate potential future problems that could arise. On the agenda for this evening are a number of items related to the district's finances. And while I agree with most of these actions, I also caution you to consider how these matters will be addressed in the months ahead. Uh, for example, item 14.1 COVID-19 transportation contractor agreement on the agenda indicates the district will honor agreements made with transportation contractors and continue to make payments for the duration of the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, knowing that these contractors as well as their employees are residents of our school district community and have financial obligations like the rest of us, I am totally supportive of paying these individuals uh, despite this unanticipated and unprecedented pandemic, at least in the short run. However, uh, there is a very real possibility that this closure could extend in the next school year or perhaps we start school in August and due to another surge of cases, most likely in the winter coinciding with flu season as reported yesterday by CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield, uh, we might have to close school and transition to distance slash online learning again. At that point in time, would you have 30 more seconds? Thanks. At the, that point in time, would those contracts have to be fulfilled or could they be amended? Uh, my main concern is that if the district continues to make those types of pay, uh, payments in full to entities not carrying out a service to the district and its families, it could come at a cost uh, at the cost of cutting educational programming or positions for faculty and staff that have worked incredibly hard to educate our students during this closure. Uh, I have a couple other things, but I know I'm getting short here on time. I just wanna end, I know this um, hopefully it becomes a moot point in the very near future and we put this whole thing behind us, but I also don't think it's financially prudent to continue in a business as usual mentality uh, with that hope that it will. Like I said, the faculty and staff of Danville Area School District are working incredibly hard to offer the best education possible under the circumstances. Time is up. Thank you. But it's up to the board president. I have about like two more sentences. Go ahead, Greg. Thanks. Like I said, the faculty and staff are working really hard um, and I'm not envious um, of you guys, but um, just ask that you take this position for which you've been elected, not that any of you likely considered the Herculean task with which you are now presented uh, to use and find innovative solutions to these challenges so that we can continue to offer our students the high quality education that Danville is known for. Thank you. Thank you. And the budget will be presented at our next board meeting, Greg, on May, I think it's the 13th. Um, and as a teacher, thank you so much for what you're doing for our students. Thank you. Jeff, are there any other public comments? Um, no, I do not think so. There's no one else left um, as an attendee that would be a comment, have potential comments. So no, not at this time. Okay, thank you. 
All right, at this time we have no presentations. Um, so the next is the consent agenda items. Um, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Second. <clears throat> second. Terry? I can't remember. My gosh, I've been out too long. Mr. Gordon? Yes. This is Dr. Gersky. Yes. Mr. Riker? Yes. Mrs. Fish? Yes. Mr. Huron? Yes. Mr. Kirsch? He put a thumb. Okay. Dr. Marks? Yes. Mrs. Edmeets? Yes. Okay, next we have um, 7.1 is mid pen engineering invoice. Do I hear a motion to approve payment of invoice 9391? I make that motion. Second. Second was uh, Vic Marks. Vic. Go ahead, Terry. Dr. Gersky. Yes. Mr. Riker. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yep. Dr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mrs. Edmates. Yes. Okay, next we have under athletics. We already did it with a consent agenda to accept the retirement of Steve Moser as head coach of the Danville girls basketball team. Um, just want to do a shout out to Steve, thanking him for his years of service as our girls basketball coach. What? And he'll, he'll be receiving a gift for his service. Um, under curriculum, we have one motion, and that is uh, to approve the 2021 school course selection guide. Do I hear a motion? I make that motion. Second. Yes. Terry? Terry is muted, just so you know. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you, Christine. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Dr. Gursky. Yes. Mr. Reichert. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yep. Ms. Dr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Mrs. Edmeets. Yes. Okay, we have nothing under school community relations. Under finance, we have bills for payment from February 19th through April 14th. Do I hear a motion to approve the bills for payment? <clears throat> I make that motion. Christine. Second. Second. Victor? Second. Vic, yeah. Mr. Reichert. Do I need to abstain? No. Yeah. Uh, am I abstain? Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yep. Dr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Dr. Gersky. Yes. Mr. Reichert. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Edmeets. Yes. Okay, now under um, finances, we also have budget transfer. 
the Head Start COLA, um, the Head Start and Pre-K count uh, continuation application, and Head Start and Pre-Count budget. Uh, do we want to do them all together? That would be 11-2 through 11-5, or do you want to do them individually? Um, however you want to make a motion. Looks, no, 11-5 on my end. 11 oh, yeah, the Head Start things are only to 11-5 then. Oh. 11-3 is a budget transfer. I have two, three, four, and five is all I have here. Hold on a second. 11-6 is the Head Start and Pre-K Counts budget on my agenda. Yeah. Yep. What don't I have? Right there it is. You don't have that. What am I missing? What's well, the budget transfer? 11-2 was the bills for payment that was reported on. Bills for payment was 11-1. No, no, I'm sorry. 11-1 is finance. Finance, And is that something we approve that? No, you don't approve the finance report. No, it's information no, only. Four. Yeah, they're just for information. Okay. So it's 11 Three through eleven six. Um, this is Mrs. Fish. I make a motion to approve eleven three through eleven six. Thank you, Christine. Second. <clears throat> Thanks, Daryl. Terry. Okay. I'm sorry, Christina first. Yes, Christina yes. and Daryl. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mr. Huron. Oh, yeah. Kyle stepped away for a minute. Okay. He cast it. Mr. Mr. Kirsch. Yep, he gave a thumbs up. Dr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Go ahead. Dr. Gursky. Yes. Mr. Reichard. Yes. Mrs. Edmeets. Yes. Okay, under personnel, um, the first two are consent. The third one is the resignation. Oh, that's also consent, sorry. Under... Twelve point four was consent. Twelve point five is you know, the Employment Pay Act 13. I, I don't know how she got that. She's got that. Okay, hold on, guys. I got a bad one. I'm going to take that away from you. All right, so we have 12.4 is, is the Act 13. So we need a motion to approve. That's the make, of employees. I'll make a motion that we approve Act 113 or Act 13. Thank you. I'll second. second. Thank you. Who yeah. second? I'm sorry. The second was Christine. The first was uh, Jen. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yep, thumbs up. Dr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gordon. Yes. Dr. Gursky. Yes. Mr. Reichard. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mrs. Edmeets. Yes. Okay, and we have 12.5, the business manager contract. Do I have a motion to approve the contract? I make a motion to improve uh, consent or agenda item 12.5. Thank you, Christine. Second. Terry. Girl, second. I'm sorry, who first? Christina. Christina. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Dr. Marks. Yes. 
Mr. Gordon. Yes. Dr. Gursky. Yes. Mr. Reichard. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mrs. Edmeads. Yes. Okay, under policy and insurance, we have 13.1. 13.1. Four, thirteen point five, and thirteen point six. How do you want to do those? Do you want to do them all together or separately? Whatever, however you make your motion. I make a motion to approve uh, agenda numbers thirteen point one, thirteen point four, thirteen point five, and thirteen point six. Okay. That was Christina, and I, would we could we say them again? Point thirteen point one. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen point four. Thirteen point five, and thirteen point six. Okay. A second. Second. Thank you, Jen. Terry. Mr. Kirsch. Yeah. Dr. Marks. Yes. Mr. Gordon. No. Dr. Gursky. Yes. Mr. Reichard. Yes. Mrs. Fish. Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mrs. Edmeads. Yes. Okay, under transportation, we have 14.1. Do I have a motion to approve 14.1? I make a motion to approve uh, agenda item 14.1. Thank you, Christine. Second? Second. Thank you, Vic. Terry? So it was Christine and Vic? Yes. Dr. Marks? Yes. Mr. Gordon? Yes. Dr. Gursky? Yes. Mr. Reichard? Stain. Mrs. Fish? Yes. Mr. Huron. Yes. Mr. Kirsch. Yes. Mrs. Edmeads. Yes. Okay, at this time, does anyone have any board concerns or items for next board agenda? If anything comes up, you can either let myself or Mrs. Boyle, Dr. Boyle, sorry, Mrs. Boyle. Um, Dr. Boyle, no, and we will add that to the agenda for next time. At this time, uh, is there any other public comment? We, oh, yes, we have uh, Mr. Gregory Titman. Okay. And I am allowing him to talk. Okay. Right. Hello? Go ahead, Greg. Hi. Just a quick question for clarification. Um, Dr. Boyle mentioned in her superintendent report that the goal is by May 11th that all teachers would host a daily live, um, you know, instructional uh, session with students. I was just wondering if she would be able to elaborate a little bit more on what that would look like. If, there, if those plans have been finalized, I don't know if that's still in the process of being worked out. Gregory, that was discussed at our administrative meeting today, and your building principals will be contacting you for more detail. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you. Any other public comment? Ani, if there's no other public comment, can I just um, thank the administration and our leadership and the teachers for a job well done through a difficult time? Absolutely, thank you. 
Anyone have anything else? Uh, yeah, I just would like to add to um, Jennifer's comment that I appreciate all the hard work that our staff uh, administrative team and teachers have been doing during this time and the support of the community has been overwhelming. So thank you for all of that. Ditto. Thank you, everyone. At this time, um, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Second. My second. Dick. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job, Thank guys. Everyone. Thanks a lot. Stop meeting. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Good to see you guys.